Okay everyone, welcome to uh, another flat cap interview. This is the second one uh, that I've done over here in the UK. Um, very pleased to have this guy sitting here at the side of me, so a lot of you will probably know him. Uh, former specials and uh, front man for his own band, the Scar Scarbilly Rebels. Yeah. So welcome Roddy Radiation Buyers. Hello. Thanks for coming on mate, I appreciate you giving up. Oh mate, don't. We, we go back, don't we? We've yeah. been around for a while. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I suppose what I'm going to, going to talk about Scarbilly Rebels and that anyway. Um, there'll be a lot of people that. You know, it's been a few years with that band, really. It's changed, the lineup's changed quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. We're doing some uh, support shows. Dave Wakeling's beat uh, started Monday in Northampton and then Coventry the following weekend. And, Few more as well. Yeah, know. nice one. Yeah, so, how, how did you, how did the band become? What, what was the, was it after the specials? That, that, well, or? I've always had my own bands. I, I formed uh, my own band, the Tear Jerkers, uh, in 1980. I think it was, uh, was it 81. While well, still in the original specials, you know. Yeah. It's basically because I couldn't play all the, a lot of the songs which. Uh, you know, I wanted to play really. I'd, you I'd had a lot of material, but yeah, I'd written a lot of songs. Some of it was too rock and roll, I suppose, for the specials. So yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. So I, I, uh, that's sort of Scarbilly Rebels. It's probably um, probably a big clue in the name as to the yeah, sort well, of music that's that you're that's playing, it. isn't it? I always tended to mix it up, and I, I always played sort of rock and roll in the specials. You know, so it's kind of it's kind of related, like. If you go back far enough, like early R and B was uh, big in Jamaica, and uh, they used to get the a lot of the like the Southern American stations in Jamaica. So I've been told, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Fats Domino was huge in Jamaica, so it was it was all kind of you know, and like the, when we switched to ska in the early days from being a reggae punk band, like the the ska kind of fitted better with the well, I do really, which is kind of Chuck Berry, Johnny Thunder type thing. You know? Yeah, yeah. A bit punky, rockabilly, I suppose. Yeah, I was, I was going to sort of, I suppose, ask. You've obviously got a lot of influence, influences from from back in the days. Is is there any sort of particular sort of artist or or whatever that you sort of think oh. sound <laughs> blend to? Because you sound that long. Probably, yeah, right. You know? I, I kind of like. I started playing guitar when I was 13 and I used to be a big fan of the monkeys, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. like, I used to love the TV show and then I went from that to Jimi Hendrix. Yeah, week, okay. you know, wow. Got into all the rock stuff and then the, the glam rock stuff. I like T-Rex and David Bowie and uh, Lou Reed and Roxy Music, all that yeah, kind of stuff. Okay. And then punk came along and I, I was kind of dressing that way anyway. I yeah. had spiky hair from the Bowie days. and leather jacket, drained pipe jeans and Doc Martens, so it was when the punk came along it was, uh, wasn't a, a big sort of leap, yeah, leap for change, because a, a lot of the bands I was into were the, the ones that influenced a lot of the early punk bands, you know, yeah, okay. Pop and, yeah, yeah. and all that kind of thing. So it was almost like a natural progression for you? Yeah, it, it, was, kind of, it was kind of nice because, uh, you know, it, it was, you could actually play you know, back rooms of pubs, you know, in the yeah. old days, and and put a put out records uh, on small independent labels, you know. Yeah. So the, the was, DIY sort of. Yeah, it was yeah. A, much as the way the specials got uh, started. You know, we borrowed the money to uh, record gangsters, you know. Yeah. Okay. And Rough Trade, small independent, they distributed it, and then uh, Christmas Records uh, signed us up, you know. Yeah. But Jerry got a two-tone label. Which a lot of the labels that wanted to sign us wouldn't, didn't want us to have a, our own sort of label or whatever. Yeah, because I've just been reading um, the Pete Shelley book. Um, yeah, I love, love the Buzzcocks. Sort of yeah. I and sported sported the Buzzcocks when I was in a, my punk band, the Wild Boys, in 1976 yeah, in Manchester. Okay. Yeah. So where I was going, like what you've just said there about the DIY thing when they did um, what was it Spiral Scratch or? With, yeah, yeah. They they produce that themselves, the whole thing. Yeah, well, I think we got Roger Lomas to, uh, who later did uh, Bad Manners and Selector, and uh, he, he kind of helped us on the, 
in the early days, you know, yeah. and sound and gangsters as well, you know. Yeah, yeah. So when you joined the band, did you know it was going to be like the specials, I suppose, the, the, the really Well, it's like I say, it was like a, a, a reggae punk band. We kind of did like reggae songs with punk bits and yeah. punk songs, you know, and, and it didn't quite gel, you know. And I, Bernie Rhodes said, like, you know, said to us, uh, Clash's manager, said, uh, you all look like you're in, in a different band. You don't look like you're in a band together. Yeah. So that's uh, when uh, we adopted the, up a bit. the Rude Boy mod kind yeah. of uh, tonic suits and that. You know. And that's that's pretty similar today. A lot of the bands, the, the Interrupters, they they look yeah. like they all belong. Well, but actually, uh, Kevin, the guitarist of the, the Interrupters, he uh, played guitar and I did a tour of California. But I had some musicians out in California who backed me as a the Yankee Rebel, as he used to call them. Yeah, you know, I was going to talk to you about that. Yeah. Like, yeah. like the, the bass player was French, uh, the drummer was Mexican, the other guitarist was Mexican, and the uh, keyboard player was Dutch. But yeah, they, all okay. lived in, they all lived in California. Yeah, the yeah. sax player was English, he lived over there. Yeah, okay. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. But say, like, we, we had Limbaugh Golding, the guitarist, and the specials did half the tour, and he got fed up because he was roughing it a bit, he, want, he wanted a bit more sort of uh, yeah, okay. luxury, you know. I did tell him beforehand it would be like... Be going know, back in time sort yeah. of thing with the... Yeah. But, uh, so when, when he went back home to Seattle, uh, Kevin uh, came and played with us. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Quiet bloke he was, you know, but yeah. he'd done a lot of work with... Uh, what's his name from Rancid? Uh, yeah, Tim Armstrong. Yeah, Tim Armstrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well I think he's championed them. Uh, yeah, well, you know, he, um, <laughs> he did say that, uh, that I invented ska punk, which is, <laughs> I wouldn't say that was the, the case really, no. but uh, it's more of a case that's the only way I know how to play at the time, it was that kind of rock and roll punk thing. Yeah, Jerry Davis asked, asked me to join the band because he wanted that uh, element in the band at the yeah. time. Yeah, well, I think, uh, like, probably my favourite song is Rap Race, which is... Which is yeah, it's funny because they didn't want to do that to start with, I think the... The college boys from the special sort of I was having a dig at them. You know? Yeah, <laughs> I wasn't. It's a great like, song. It's a great yeah, it was, song. It was about uh, I overheard some uh, rich uh, students discussing what jobs their uh, parents had lined up for when they left uh, yeah. left college. You know, I just kind of got a bit pissed up about it, so yeah, I wrote the song. It's brilliant. Really. It's a brilliant song. But it's amazing the number of people that got offended by it, and it's usually the people I was having a dig at. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> I suppose back then as well, I mean, it didn't take much for people to get the hackles up about songs. It was sort of, well, there was I, a lot of I, stuff I always, not allowed. I always thought of like the, the early specials was, was still part of the punk thing, because we kind yeah. of started in 1978 and supported The Clash. And, uh, you know, it, we had a lot of that element in it. And, and like Terry Hall yeah. did the kind of a Johnny Rotten type monotone voice, you know. So yeah. we were kind of connected, you know, with yeah, the early punk scene. Yeah. I think people that would have been into that would, would naturally have transcended. Well, that's the, it. I think a lot, a lot of the kids that spat at us, we supported the Clash. But the <laughs> next year, they all they were there in they, they all changed the their, their image. Well, not all of them, but some of them changed yeah, yeah. their image and started uh, wearing the, the hats and the, the suits. And you stuff. don't don't really see the subcultures these days, though, do you? You know, no, then things uh, are starting. Enough. I, I think most of the kids nowadays are more into into video games and yeah, stuff like that. Definitely. Know? It doesn't seem to be the same tribalism. No. You tend to find like a lot of the, the different tribes now hang out together, you know, skinheads, mobs, yeah. rockabillers and Which everybody. is not a bad thing, is it? Yeah, you know, yeah. They can all get on so it's, um, it's not quite the, the aggression you used to get, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I think I got beaten up by everybody in them days, <laughs> you know. It's like the skinheads will have a go at me or the rockabillers will have a go at me or you know yeah. or the tents or whatever, you know. It was kind of they couldn't quite make out what, what I was. Know where you they were, weren't, really. they weren't sure yeah. what was it was either a rockabilly or a punk or what, because the way I dressed was like a mixture of all of them. Yeah, you know. yeah. You, you've got your own style and what have you. Yeah, I've, since like, the mid seventies, really, I've been wearing the got, same kind of yeah. gear and that. You know. You've got your stage moves as well. You still do them, don't you? Well, last time I seen mostly, you, mostly, yeah. You still <laughs> Occasionally, I do the knee drops. I sometimes wonder if I get back up again. You know? Yeah. Well, I've, I've seen. I did. I did have a. I did a gig in Birmingham, and uh, I dropped down on my knee and, and hit like the, the 
boom, the mic stand on me knee and I couldn't get up there. My roadie was thinking, so I'm going to help pick him up. I managed to crawl back up, you know, but in our bird. So I suppose the band name, Scarbilly Rebels, was that an easy, easy name did, for you to I come up with? I did or? mention, uh, I did an interview at uh, the Face magazine back in 1981. I mentioned then I, I might call my band called Scarbilly Rebels. I was kind of half joking, you know. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but it, it fits in with what you do, doesn't it? It's, it's the score it does, and the, the well, it, it's, rock and roll. It, it, people say it shouldn't work, but I think it does musically, yeah. you know. Yeah, it does. But it's just some say some of the rockabillies won't like it because it's too scar and vice versa. Some of the mods and skinheads think it's they shouldn't be into rockabilly, but it's not quite as bad as it used to be. No, nah. I mean to me, if it's good music and yeah, you enjoy it, then it doesn't really matter, does it? But yeah, I mean I think I've got all my tastes go right across the board. Yeah, I don't yeah. listen to a lot of blues and uh, flamenco at home, you know. Yeah, like, like early black yeah, okay. blues like 1940s and 50s and. Uh, I love flamenco, like Spanish guitar yeah, right. playing. So a, lot, a lot of that is why playing some of my lead stuff is kind of yeah, yeah. flamenco based, you know. So how does the um, how does the writing process go for you? Are you are you always? I know you've got the grandkids, the well, same as myself. Well, now, but, um, I normally get like a, a riff or something on guitar, and then a title or or first verse, and then kind of work from there, you know. Yeah. Well, I haven't written a great deal for quite a few years, you know, yeah. I don't seem to have the same, you know. The energy in. Like I've got it. about three or four or half finished, but I don't seem to sort of like get the inspiration to, yeah. to finish them, you know. So I suppose that, that leads on a little bit. What What's out there at Scarb Billy Rebels and is there going to be anything in the future? If you've got three half well, songs, that's know, almost a, an EP if you can come up with one more, I suppose. Yeah, I've I've done one CD and a couple of EPs and that. Yeah. And, you know, I just thought maybe I will do some more. I don't know. I just I often wonder whether it's because people don't really buy CDs anymore. You know, they sort of download. I've got what I've done and Scarborough is on download, but it, <laughs> the money you get for it yeah, is a bit of you know, like, yeah. like to record it in a studio and then get all the CDs and that press stuff. So I haven't got it. The record deal, you know. No. To get it all all pressed up and done and pay for the studio, it's a lot of money. You yeah, know? yeah. And sometimes you don't get back what no, you put no, in, you yeah. know. But that's not the point, I guess. You know? I, I, well, it, it, you know, you, 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 you've been doing music all your life, so. I yeah. Mean, well, my father you, played. You, you my father enjoy played it. soul bands in the sixties, and uh, my grandfather he played trombone in uh, dance bands in the thirties. Yeah, okay. So it's. It was not sort my, of in your blood then, isn't Well, it? my father said to me, you're never going to go to university, you're not clever enough, you better learn an instrument, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he got me on trombone when I was uh, 11. Yeah, okay. And I switched to guitar at 13. Yeah, that was a good choice. I, I you can't think. sing or play trombone. No, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I noticed there's vinyls, in, I mean, this is a great setting for me. Yeah, it's a lovely place, yeah. The, the, the I, I recommend it to anybody, it's yeah. a coffee truck. If you get chance in... You know, you, you love the two tone and the skull. Get a beer here as well. Yeah, old red stripe, eh? Yeah. But yeah, I noticed there's vinyls, there's a shop here, you can get all well, sorts of We've played here well. a few times, I've done solo gigs here as well. Yeah, it's first time. It's a small on. venue, but it's, uh, the museum stairs are really good. A little cafe and a restaurant, a Jamaican restaurant, and a couple of shops, clothes shop and a book yeah, and good. record shop. You know. Yeah, so it's a good place to good, good place to village. Yeah, I mean, village. You could almost be in Brighton or some place like the Lane, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of got that kind of uh, feel about it. Yeah, and so all the people that work here, all volunteers, and nice people. You know. Yeah, yeah, and they're all. Well, was, originally, like they they asked us when they were setting this place up if uh, the specials would like put money into it. I mean, obviously, said, yeah, that's fine. We'll put a yeah, couple yeah. Of grand in each or whatever. Terry Hall said, I've done enough for Coventry. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> the rest of them want to put any money into it. Oh, All right. Yeah. Neville's here quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. And his wife, Christine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's Neville's still Poland performing, isn't he? On tour, you know. yeah. yeah, 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 so he's still performing. He's busy. Are you probably the only two from the specials that have got bands after the specials, I think, aren't you? I don't know well, what the whole the bass player. He's done a few different groups. He did uh, a couple of blues bands and, you know. Yeah, yeah okay. 
Well, what's 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 the go for you then? You've you've got the the, the gigs with the beat and what have you. You've got a, a busy yeah, year well, ahead now. That's sort of. So I've got I've again. got an agency, so I tend to sort of get the gigs when people get in touch, more or less, or yeah. or just ask the venues if they're they're interested. So I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm not. Are you doing the special special uh, specialised? Thing yeah, I've done quite a lot for the yeah. Teenage Cancer Trust. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Neville's wife, Christine, runs uh, Scarmouth, which is... Oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen that, yeah. that. Yeah. Most, most years we go down there and do that. Yeah, that's great. That's good fun. You know, he's holiday camp, so hide your eye. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, well, thank you for coming on, my friend. Yeah, it's great you. to see you again. We'll go and get yeah. another beer in yeah. a minute, I reckon. Oh, right, I'll do um, some shopping, yeah. I think. Right, cheers, cheers, Rolly. Thanks a lot. Well, thank you. Cheers, everyone. Catch right, you next bye. time.